As you probably all know, Monolith recently revealed in a livestream that there will be microtransactions in Middle Earth Shadow of War. Everybody and their mother has covered it by now, so we might as well do it too, right? In this video, I want to start a discussion. Before starting, I'll clear up what that means. As the Oxford Dictionary states, a discussion is the action or process of talking about a specific topic in order to reach a decision or to exchange ideas. So, in order to effectively discuss a topic, we have to keep an open mind, meaning we consider all arguments and form our opinion based on that. I realize this is the internet and asking for a civilized discussion is maybe a little bit too much, but I think we can all do it. So let's put on our big boy pants, let's not be dicks, and talk about these microtransactions in Shadow of War. I'll start by explaining what microtransactions are and why they are implemented in the first place. After that I'll go over the arguments and counter arguments for adding them in Shadow of War, and at the end I'll give my opinion. Microtransactions are small value financial transactions that happen within digital games and apps, generally below $10. There are four kinds of microtransactions. In-game currencies, random chance purchases, in-game items and expiration. The explanations for each of these are on screen, we're not going over them for the purposes of this video. But as you can see, the first two can apply to Shadow of War. We made a video on the market where you can see the form these microtransactions are presented in. However, it's actually a pretty old marketing system that dates back to the arcade machines, where you had coin-operated machines that required a few quarters to play. When you ran out of life, you could insert more coins to play more. Over the years, this marketing model has of course changed, and in 2011, Yahoo reported that free-to-play revenue, meaning microtransactions, were earning companies more money than the premium revenue. And that's exactly the reason gaming companies and publishers started to add these microtransactions. It's easy money. And that's their primary interest, isn't it? There are two ways microtransactions give these companies more money. The most obvious reason is that instead of paying $60 once, they add new content and keep charging you money for it. This makes them more money in the long term. Secondly, with the random chance purchases, the player will spend more money and there is a big chance they're not getting what they want. So they will try again and again and again until they have the loot or they run out of mo money. This also increases the long term money making. The reason this random chance purchase works is grounded in our basic psychology. It's essentially gambling. There are two concepts behind this and these are impulse buying and loss aversion. And the gaming companies know this. Impulse buying is simply when you buy something that you weren't planning on buying. Uh, think of when you go to the store and you see a discounted product and you buy it. Because, come on, it's, it's half priced. Loss aversion is essentially where the pain of losing is psychologically, but twice as powerful as the pleasure of gaining. It's better not to lose $5 than to find $5. Now that we have a little bit of knowledge of the microtransactions, let's move on to the pros and cons for the microtransactions in Shadow of War. As with most arguments, we can roughly divide it into two sides. On the one hand, you have people that favor microtransactions or think that they really don't harm the game and player experience. On the other hand, we have people that don't like microtransactions, which seems to be the majority in this case. The first group's main argument is that you don't have to buy the microtransactions, since you can earn everything that you can buy in-game. This is partially true, since you can buy the silver chests with Mirian, and these can give some of the same rewards as the gold and mithril chest. You essentially pay for a higher chance of earning this loot, or in this case, a guarantee. Though this is true, we don't know how much time it will take to unlock the same loot. If the last game is any indication, you can spend 100 hours and still not get what you want. And that's when paying gives you a clear advantage. This also ties in with the balancing of the game. Monolith mentioned that the game isn't balanced around the market, but that they added it after balancing the game. This might be true, or it might not be. We won't know until the game comes out. Though it must have an effect somehow, otherwise the market wouldn't be in the game at all. Maybe they designed the game to be a grindfest, just so some people would pay their way through it. The problem with this argument however is that we simply won't know it until the game comes out. So let's reserve our judgement on this part. This also brings up the argument that it isn't pay to win, mostly because it's a single player game. 
I agree partially with this. It doesn't really seem pay to win. But as we all know, by now it isn't completely a single player game either. So when competing against other people, they might have paid for their legendary orc followers. Or better gear. Even still, it wouldn't bother me too much, since the game is mostly focused around single player. But to say it isn't pay to win at all is just not true. Next to that, some people will say that Monolith added these, so some people that have less time to play the game don't have to grind. Instead of putting in hours and hours, you can just buy loot, so you don't have to unlock it through gameplay. The problem with this is that you don't have to earn your rewards anymore, it's instant gratification. Like everything these days. It's rooted in our psychology that when you work for something and you get rewarded that it's just that more meaningful. And by implementing these microtransactions you're taking this away. So essentially they're decreasing the value of the reward. Of course this affects some people more than others, but it's still a thing for almost every person. And finally, it's not necessarily the fact that these companies want more money, because that's just smart marketing. Making games costs a lot of money, and we have to realize that as gamers. But another reason that a lot of people are upset is the fact that the devs weren't and still aren't transparent about it. They dodge or answer questions indirectly. For example, in a Q&A, the question was asked if gold will give you an advantage over Mirian. They simply said you can unlock everything in-game. But they didn't mention that this might take hours upon hours. This shows us that they don't have faith if what they're doing is the right thing. Besides this, they also deleted a lot of comments and threads on the Steam forums that were complaining about their microtransactions and most of them weren't even disrespectful at all. Of course there is no real right and wrong here, but it's not only a disrespectful thing to do, but it's also generally not a good move to screw over your consumers since they will lose faith and move on to other games from other gaming companies. To conclude, my opinion is as you all probably noticed that I am against these microtransactions in Shadow of War. You've heard the arguments and that's where I rest my case. Sadly, there are no magical solutions, we will still buy and play the game simply because it looks to be an awesome game, besides the market feature. I haven't ever spent a single dollar or in my case euro on microtransactions and I'm not planning on breaking that streak. In order to change this, the best thing would be to not buy the game, to show the developers and mainly the publisher, Warner Brothers, that we won't stand for this. Because sometimes the only language they understand is money. But we know a lot of people will still buy this game and you're probably right to do so. So it's up to you if you want to buy the game or not. But before we end the video, we want your opinion. Let us know in the comments, but keep it civilized. If you're not able to respect another person's opinion, don't comment. It's as simple as that. We will remove any disrespectful comments, but we trust you guys can do this. Anyways, we hope we gave you some insight and now you know how I think about it. Thanks for watching. Consider leaving a like if you enjoyed the video or a dislike if you didn't. In either case, leave us some constructive feedback on the video, art style, commentary and content. In case you want to stay updated, consider subscribing and clicking the notification bell for instant pop-ups when we upload. If you have any questions, want to share your ideas, or like we said, you want to start a discussion, let us know in the comment section down below and we'll get back to you. Once again, thanks for watching and we'll hopefully see you.